Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about the five vital signs of the eye. Now this is important information since it's the information that you'll want to relay to your ophthalmology colleagues when you're talking to them about a patient on the phone. And then this will also come up a lot during our Tuesday case conferences. So just going through the five vital signs, they are pupils, extraocular movements, visual acuity, visual fields, and intraocular pressure. And we'll go through all these vital signs in a little bit more detail right now. So starting with pupils, the first thing that you wanna check is to see if the patient's pupils are equal. Now, if they're unequal, there are a few things that you wanna consider on your differential diagnosis. You might be thinking maybe this patient has intracranial hemorrhage, acute angle closure glaucoma, or aneurysm. You also wanna check the shape of the pupils. So are they round? or are they irregular shaped and peaked? If that's the case, then you might wanna be thinking about an open globe on your differential diagnosis. You'll also wanna to check to see if the pupils react equally to light. So on this diagram, you see the normal reaction on the left side of the screen where you shine the pen light in either eye and both pupils constrict equally. But then if you go to the right side of the diagram, you see that the left eye has an afferent pupillary defect. Now what that means is that if you shine the pen light in the right eye, both pupils constrict equally, but then you notice that when you shine the pen light in the left eye, you're not getting that same constriction of the pupils. The next thing you'll wanna check is extraocular movements. So you wanna make sure that the patient can fully look up, down, to the left, and to the right. So this diagram on the left side of the screen just goes through some of the muscles that control these movements of the eye and what muscles you wanna be thinking about if you notice that the patient doesn't have full extraocular movements in both eyes. So some of the most common ones that you might see is that a patient is unable to look up. So if the patient can't look fully up with one of their eyes, then I'd start thinking about is their inferior rectus muscle entrapped? And this can happen commonly in orbital floor fractures, which we might see in some of our trauma patients. You also might notice maybe the patient can't look laterally all the way, so they're unable to abduct their eye completely. You'll wanna be thinking about a cranial nerve six palsy in this situation. The next vital sign of the eye that you wanna check is visual acuity. So we do have the eye chart up on the wall in the emergency department, but you could alternatively use one of the pocket eye charts to check this too. If the patient normally wears corrective lenses, you'll wanna make sure that they put their glasses on before you test their visual acuity, but maybe the patient doesn't have their glasses with them while they're in the emergency department. So if that's the case, you can use pinhole testing instead. When you're reporting visual acuity, Let's say that the patient was able to get down to the 2030 line, for example, but they only got one letter wrong when they were doing that. Then you would report their visual acuity as shown here, which would be 2030 minus one. I also just wanted to go over some common abbreviations that you might see when visual acuity is reported. So NLP stands for no light perception. LP is if the patient can see light. HM stands for hand motion and then CF would be if the patient can actually see enough detail to count fingers. So those four first abbreviations are things that you might use if you try to do the eye chart and the patient is having trouble seeing any of the letters at all. Then the last three abbreviations are things that you'll probably see commonly in ophthalmology notes or recommendations. So OD stands for right eye, OS stands for left eye, and then OU stands for both eyes. So these are just some good abbreviations to know so that you're able to understand all of the ophthalmology notes and recommendations. The fourth vital sign of the eye that you wanna check are the patient's visual fields. And in this diagram, you can see the normal setup for doing that test. And just one thing to note is that the examiner's eyes should be at the same level as the patient's eyes when you're testing their visual fields. So you wanna make sure that you test in all four quadrants. And then when you report any deficits in visual fields, you'll use superior and inferior, and then temporal and nasal to describe exactly which visual fields they're having the deficit in. Then the last thing that we'll wanna check when measuring the five vital signs of the eye is the intraocular pressure. 
So the device on the top is the Tono Pen, and then the device on the bottom is the Shiatz Tonometer. So you can use either one to check the intraocular pressure. The normal range when you're checking intraocular pressure is 10 to 20. And one thing to note with intraocular pressure is you do not want to check this if there's any suspicion at all of an open globe injury. Since applying any pressure at all to the eye with the tonopen or the tonometer could just make things worse in this situation. And then if you notice that the intraocular pressure is significantly elevated, a couple things that you might want to be thinking about on your differential would be glaucoma or a retroorbital hematoma. So just a brief overview of the five vital signs of the eye. You want to check the pupils first, then you'll check the extraocular movements, visual acuity, visual fields, and intraocular pressure. So these are just good things to know and have memorized. And I hope you're looking forward to eye day. I know that I am, and I will see you all then.